Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the apostolic ministry gift of Dr. R.J. McCowan, and we honor and receive him as our spiritual father. Our hearts are open to receive. Our minds are sharp and alert, transformed and renewed. Our necks are outstretched in anticipation of what the prophet has to say to us on today. We fully expect that this impartation will empower us, will equip us, will position us to carry out our God-given purpose and fulfill our ministry callings and assignments. We set a guard over our hearts and minds and will not allow the enemy to steal this life-changing word seed from our lives. We believe in our heart and now confess with our mouths that this God-inspired word represents hope for today and for all our tomorrows. Well, welcome to our special edition of Hope for Today. I'm your host tonight, Dr. R.J. McCown. I'm glad that you have tuned in to uh, our podcast. I want to give you just a few moments to contact your loved ones, your friends, your spouses, your children, wh whomever, um, and make them aware that our podcast is actually airing right now. And um, we're in, and by the way, we're in our, in our, in our, um, our recording studio. Welcome to La Veda Studios. It's a beautiful studio that we've had for oh, a number of years. And uh, we're excited about the uh, opportunity in the very near future. Well, tonight actually kind of kicks off its usage in a, in a more, uh, uh, well, more usage of me ministering the Word of God. I'm excited about it. Now, we can't show you much of it right here, but you can see a little bit of it. Um, let, me, let me acknowledge something. Hi, Deidre. Hi, Miss Joy. Lisa Brown. Hey, Gerald. Irene. Eddie. But Alan Davis. Good to see you guys. Um, again, thank you for joining us in our beautiful studio, uh, the Vegas Studios. Uh, we've had this studio for a number of years, and I'm excited about uh, ministering or coming to you from our, our studio. Be sure and like our program. Be sure and make your comments. I enjoy uh, reading them. Hi, Devor Hamilton, intercessor, intercessor. Glad you're here. Kena, good to see you as well. Hey, Wanda. Uh, Wanda Knox, good to see you. Um, and so we're excited about coming to you. James, Brother James Yerby, good to see you as well. Um, Pam Benton, also it's good to see you and hear from you as well. And um, again, um, hey, Greg Smith, all the way from Baltimore. Hey, how you doing? Good to hear from you as well. Um, we're excited about coming to you. I have a special word from, from the Lord for you. Um, and I'm excited about sharing that with you. Hey, Xavier, Angie, Angie McPherson, good to hear. See you, Mildred. Hey, Mildred. Mildred Lawrence. Uh, Tira Casper. Uh, good to hear from you as well. Um, it's an exciting time for those that are listening to God, and it can be an extremely difficult, a trying time for those whose ears are away from God. Really, the indication is if your ears are away from God, usually your life is away from Him. And guys, that's not a that's not a good position to assume when you are endeavoring to live a life worth living. You want to have ears for God. So the Bible encourages us to incline our ears. What do you mean incline? That means move all the obstructions, move things out of the way. You know, in those days, uh, it wasn't unusual for men to have long hair. We have some today that enjoy wearing their, you know, lift their hair. But when you really incline, you move, you, you move your hair back so you don't want anything obstructing, obstructing your ability to hear and hear clearly. You want to be able to hear and hear clearly. And anyone that's listening to God and has gotten to a place where there's clarity in identifying his voice, then it means a different approach to life and also means the difference in life uh, for those who are listening to God. It's extremely important that you do so. Amen. Um, also, I want to say, well, let me just kind of get to the word here a minute. We're going to be here a few minutes, and I'm glad, again, I'm glad that you tuned in. Tonight, I want to mention and say some things about um, dealing with the wear and tear of life. And um, 
you know, I, I, I do my best, I won't say best, but I'm, I'm fully aware and I try to stay highly sensitive to the need not to allow stress, anxiety, uh, nervousness, and, and things of that nature in, to infiltrate my thought process, my, my uh, uh, decision-making times. I don't want any of that to influence why I do what I do and who I choose to do it with. Hey, uh, hey, Brianna, uh, you stunned. Sonia, good to see you as well. Hey, Brother Greg Oaks, the old man of God is what your name is. Hey, Brother Greg, it's good to hear from you as well. Um, so as you endeavor to approach life, please heighten your awareness of the need to hear from God so you can live the life he intended for you to live. Amen. So we're going to have to deal with a little bit tonight about what, you know, you're familiar with this phrase, you know, the wear and tear of life or the wear and tear of something. We understand anything that has a natural existence has a, has a, you know, a, a, I'll say a time on it. Uh, because of what Adam uh, did, of course, in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, but thank God Jesus has come. Hey, Mr. Mildred, good to hear from you as well. Um, and the, hey, Miss J, Miss Jones, call them Smith and Jones. They're, they're, the, <laughs> they're the, the power uh, ladies at Numa. So God bless you. Good to hear from you as well. But when you endeavor to live this life that's worth living, one that you can enjoy, it's important that you lend a ear to God on a regular and, and consistent basis. So when you think about something wearing and tearing, you're talking that you're thinking about something that's exposed to maybe the weather, the, the thing that's been weathered, weather beaten, whatever the case they use those words. And we're talking about damage to uh, natural and inevitable uh, damage that occurs to things during the natural course of its use. We understand if you drive an automobile, you have to take care of it. You have to do things to sustain it. And after a while, it may be time to upgrade, maybe for some of you. <laughs> maybe me, even me, even, huh? To upgrade and, and through um, uh, over time because of its natural, normal use of wear and tear. And so when we look at natural things, we understand that when we look at our personal life, I think we need, in fact, I know we need to take a, another look at life. And another look at how we're approaching life so we can minimize uh, the, the, the use of our natural physical instruments, what we call the body. And it's important what goes on with us in our souls that's connected to what's going on in our natural physical bodies as well. So we need to prosper in our souls. Isn't that right? Now, I want you to notice something here. Uh, according to... Um, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. In fact, let me just go over there. I got to remind myself I'm not in a, such a time crunch, so I can slow down a little bit, like I normally am in the, in our noonday podcast. But I want to stop. I mean, slow down for a moment and let you read after me, so you can get some idea of what I'm encouraging here tonight. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus said, "Come unto me." That's a summons. It's a summons that you and I have to say yes to. Uh, we're being summoned or called to this posture, or called to this place or this position in life. He says, come, come, come. You see the open, the open invitation into what Jesus wants to introduce us to. And as he's talking about a life learned from him. He's talking about a life learned from him. Listen to what he says. King James all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come learn. Watch this. Learn from me. Now, let's go on this. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest into your soul, unto your soul. For many, for my yoke is easy and my burden is, is, is light. Now, I want to read this also from the Message Bible because I love the way it, 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 it sounds out to you. He asked you a question immediately. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Not a good place to be. He went on to say, ask the question, burn out on religion, even. Now, God, let me tell you something about religion. You know, what do you mean religion? That which is taught that's not coming from God, that's under the, um, 
you know, under the impression that it is a life God wants you to live. It's not. If it's wearing and tearing on you, but if it's moving your life away from the rhythms that grace, the grace of God puts, uh, uh, that breaks up from you and introduces you to, that's not God. That will wear you out trying to, trying to earn something from God or trying to earn something in life like that. No. He said, come away from that ideal. Get away from that, I, that attitude. I'm going to show you the life that you want to live. And watch it in, in, from the uh, Message Bible, verse 28. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out even on, on religion? He says, come to me. I'm summoning you from that place, from that attitude, from that approach in life. He said, get away. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. What do you mean? Private, personal time. Private, personal time with God. Now he's not encouraging isolation, but there are times for separation. And the difference between the two is when people isolate, usually they just don't want to be in the midst of people. Not what he's encouraging. Satan would love to isolate you and make you vulnerable to and susceptible to all his nonsense. He'll talk you in a hole somewhere. But if you choose isolation versus separation, and usually when you separate, like a husband and wife, from time to time, one spouse or the other may go to the, uh, you know, to a corner in the house or a bedroom or a closet place, and with the consent of the other spouse, with the understanding that they need to spend time with God for more. Then immediately, when you come out of that place from hearing God, you raise up from that place that you. Then you get back to you reconcile and you get back to your union, and it shouldn't be a stronger position from coming from the time spent with God. Amen. Um, let me get on with this, please. Um, get away with me, and you'll re you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. What is that like? A real rest. What is that? Oh my God! Well, let's just read a bit more. I show you how to take a real risk. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Then he says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill fitting on you. Keep company with me and you learn to live freely and lightly. Man, that's when you get into a flow. You're not looking around for anyone else's approval. Uh, because you know God's got you in a nice flow. And yeah, that doesn't mean you grow difficult and independent, and turning your shoulder away from people. I got my own life. That's not what he's talking about. God, he's talking about in a flow that others notice the beauty and the flow and the godliness of that. And they, you know, it carries an attraction. It makes others want to ask you how come your life is the way it is. And guess what? You get to tell them. The next thing you know, they're in pursuit of the same or similar type of life because this is a personal journey with a personal Savior that he's excited about revealing and making known to you as well. No respective person. Now, I want you to notice, because I love episodes. Um, before I go there, let's, let's, let's look at something else here. Um, in this same chapter, same verse, I wrote some notes down because I want to make sure I, I, I cover this. The metaphor of yoke is that it joins um, the joining of two animals to work together. And usually that, usually that involves hard work and toil. So he's not encouraging a relationship with him that's going to invite us into hard, toiling type life. Now, that, this is a metaphor when he's talking about yoke. You see the yoking of two animals. And they, they they work together, they yoke, and they work together, they pull together to lighten the load for, for you know, for, for one another. Actually. And, but it could involve hard work and toiling work. But it's not talking about when you get with Jesus, he's not inviting us into a hard toiling type situation. But this is a metaphor. And the metaphor is he's inviting us, inviting us into a union with him. Um, when he's talking about in a union with him, listen to this, I wrote this down. He's talking about an anointing from him. And that anointing will rest on you in the form of, of alertness or sharpness, 
It will rest on you in the form of a readiness of mind to do. It will rest on you and, and, and influence your willingness to do because you won't override your will. But then it can bring you to a place where you are a quick learner, quick to comprehend, quick to learn. Never done that before. Doesn't matter. You've got the teacher in you. And you are quick to learn what you should do in this situation or any other situation. Yeah, that's all a part of an anointing that's developed in your life and mine. So you don't have to be afraid of what you're not familiar with. You don't have to be afraid of someone you haven't been or someone you haven't ever met before. That's part of the progress of the, the, the progression in your life and mine. If you're going with God, you're going to always be in places you've never been, experiencing things you've never experienced with people you've never known before. Because that's part of how the anointing affects your life and mine. So you become a quick learner. You become knowledgeable or you 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 embrace the know-how. Suddenly you have you got this know-how on you. Hadn't done it before, but when you reach to it, put your hands up, this know-how thing comes on you. Amen. And then you get the benefit of this divine wisdom. All of these things translate into prosperity, success, and not having a hard time of it. Now, this is a powerful place to be in. I think I'm going to go over this list one more time because I got this before I got here. And I want to show you what Jesus is actually inviting us into and, and, and desire to get us away from. Amen? He's not taking effort out of our life, but he's taking toil out of our life. We have to put forth the effort, but we don't have to be toiling. It doesn't have to be hard to, uh, hard to do, even though it has to be done. Now, watch this. So when this anointing comes on you like this, there is a heightened alertness. You become sharp and alert. And then, you know, in the book of Ephesians, it encourages us to walk and be alert. Why? Because you can seize God giving opportunity. It told us not to be foolish with our life, but be alert in our living so we can seize God giving opportunity. So we're talking about an alertness, we're talking about a readiness of mind. We talk about a willingness because, again, he does not override our will, so it requires our willingness. Here we go. Then you become a quick learner. I'm big on this one because most, when I look around my life, to everything I'm looking at, I hadn't been formally trained uh, to do. And we certainly don't minimize the importance of academic strength. But it has its limitations even at its best and at its highest levels. But God knows no limitations. And he introduces us into what he knows and for his purpose and plan and will for your life. So you're a quick learner. You have this uh, know-how presence on you. And then you have the benefit of divine wisdom, access. All of these things translate into prosperity, success, and not having a hard time of it. We don't have to sweat trying to get ahead, sweat trying to make things work. No. You take the sweat out of this thing and we we'll just pay attention to it. Amen. Now I want to back up. Uh, well, before I do, let's go over to Proverbs 13. And now I'm going to start reading from verse 13. Proverbs chapter 13 and then verse 13. Are you out there? Let me see if you are. Let me look at the comment section here for a minute. Let's see. See if any of you guys are listening here and paying attention. Yeah, I see where some of you are commenting. That's good. I see you think you say hallelujah. That don't mean, well, okay, I'll stay with it. <laughs> quick learning, divine wisdom. Got the know-how on you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're a quick learner. That's who you are. It's not someone you, you, you know, you, you want to try to become. That's really who's inside you. Amen? You're a quick learner. You are highly alert. You have a readiness of mind to do. Isn't that right? Hi, Pam. Hi, uh, hi Dominique. Uh, Kathleen Smith. Good to hear from you. Francis uh, Pierce. Very nice to hear you. Uh, Ronnie, I got to know what's wrong, Miss Rocky. Yes, to hear from you as well. Sandy Espy, hey baby, I know you. <laughs> yeah, you got to know how on you too, don't you? Praise God. All right, let's get back to this just one more. Proverbs chapter 13, and then I want to look at verse 13. Uh, guys, when the Lord called me into ministry, everything He called me to do, I've never done, and I had no prior knowledge on how to do. But He was there. And he's the one that's putting the know-how on you. And guys, the awesome thing about that is he begins to work through your imagination. 
through your imagination, it, 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 your, your imagination just sort of wakes up. You think of the sleep, you didn't realize that was a part of your makeup, but it'll wake up. And suddenly you start imagining things, you start seeing yourself place, and you get excited about it. And then the word supports it. And the next thing you know, you got your hands out there and you put forth some effort and voila. The next thing you know, you're getting introduced to something that you didn't know was possible coming from your life because you tapped this thing with God. And that's what he's saying. Jesus said, come, come, let me show you how this works. Go build a building. Huh? I've never built a building before that, but I have. I know how to do this. You just make yourself available. But I need you to think a certain way. What way is that, Lord? Think like I think. Do what I would do. Do what I tell you to do. And then you get the results that, that, that I'm, I'm trying to share with you. So that's, a, that's an awesome invitation into life and assignments from God. Now, Proverbs chapter 13, and again, again, verse uh, 13. I think I'm going to read this from the, 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 the Passion Translation. Because it kind of said something that reinforces what we're encouraging you today. Proverbs 13, and then verse 13. Despise the word. And here it says, will you? You better despise what they mean to despise. To treat it as if it has little or no relevance to you. To treat it like it has little or no value. The word is quick, powerful. Hebrews 12. Look at any uh, to it, so piercing, even to divine and son and soul and spirit. Is a discerning of thought into the heart. See what he's saying? He's a what? He's discerning. He's, this is a powerful thing. The word of God has life in it. And when we open our hearts and lives up to the word and we embrace the word and act on it, it comes alive. It activates and it accomplishes what it's released or assigned to do. The word will accomplish what has been assigned to do. And that's a powerful place for you and I to, to, to embrace in life when we're flowing with God. Hey, Charlotte, good to hear from you. Good brother William. God bless you. Now let watch it. So you don't want to despise the word. What word? The word you're hearing right now is not to be despised. Don't despise. Don't treat it as if it has little or no relevance to you. I don't know what he's talking about. Well, it's time for you to find out what's, what you've been uh, told here today. Isn't that right? So you need to ask God, inquire. So he said, if you despise it, it says here, then you'll pay the price and it won't be pretty. You see what's going on in a lot of people's lives. It's not that they hadn't been exposed to the word. The word is out there. Now, we got a lot of nonsense out here, but there's a lot of powerful revelations out here as well. So the word is out here, and you don't want to be a person who treats it as if it has no real value to you or no relevance to you. Yes, it does. The reason why you might take that position is because you can't see where anything in your life right now resembles what the word says you are, but it's there, and it's true. You just have to lean in, right? But the one, look at the contrast, just the opposite. But the one who honors the Father's holy instructions will be rewarded. Rewarded where? In life. Out in the open in life. Open, rewarded, living. Now that'll get your enemy upset. <laughs> no doubt about that. And the Bible said they'll gnash with their teeth, but to no bell. So you, you and I want to enjoy a open, rewarded, life in the earth where it's obvious that the god that we know and now are serving and are now listening to is manifesting himself in our life that's a powerful place in there right you'll be rewarded out in the open when the lovers of god he's talking about men and women who love god look at verse 14 and teach you truth there are some men i wrote this down men that love god will teach you the truth about god Men who love God will tell you the truth and nothing but the best of their ability, the truth about God and the truth about life. Sometimes we just haven't heard the truth about life. And I usually go over there in Genesis 12 if I'm in front of a group of people that I'm not so familiar with. I'll kind of gauge the atmosphere and I'll go into Genesis 12 sometime. And his, his, um, his summons to Abraham and God's intention, intent, he said, uh, with Abraham. He said, Abraham, I'll bless you, and all families of the earth will be blessed. And it reveals God's universal intention for all mankind, and especially unity of family members. So you see God making clearly known to Abraham 
what his intentions are for all ethnicity, every family, every individual. It's a universal intention of God to empower every individual to prosper while in the earth. And it goes on, to be honest with you, you're talking about entrepreneurship. Here. He said, if I can teach you, you'll teach others. If I show you how to prosper, you'll be able to show others how to prosper. So it's, it's a powerful thing that, that that's God's universal intention is to show you and I how to live in this earth. What they said, men that love God would teach you about God and about life. What did it represent to your life and mine? A fountain of life will open up within you. From where? You didn't know that was there? Yeah. This fountain of life will open up from within you. You don't have to wait on a night shiny armor, ladies. This thing is, is, is residing in you. Oh, why I said that, but I said it, so I guess that's the end of that, right? <laughs> Hi, Mary. Good to hear from you as well. Uh, what am I looking at here? Brittany Miss Watson. Good to hear from you as well. But this fountain is lying, could be lying dormant inside you. You don't want to, you don't get dull and, 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 and dormant on the inside. But when you're listening to things like this, it can start wake up a fountain of life from within you. And suddenly you step start standing up from with from within. And life, uh, you approach life differently. So Truth about God, men of God that love God would teach you that. Uh, verse 15, there's an admiration for the wise. Admiration. In some instances, guys, you know, we've got to get back to this place where we have a greater degree of, of admiration for men of God that's obviously walking with God. You ought to have admiration. The Satan is trying his best to rob the body of Christ of that benefit. But we need admiration for, and in some instances, a greater sense of awe, or awe-ness. You know, a celebrity comes to town, and people get all excited, <laughs> and I, I mean, that's fine to see people on that. I'm not throwing rocks at that. But think about men who love God and are showing you about the highest, highest authority, the highest, greatest I'll say personality that could possibly exist, and you're just not as excited. You need to have some admiration for a man who's walking in the wisdom of God and obviously knows God and is willing to share that for you. And in some instances, some greater sense of all, all this, being all, all, man, wow. Yeah, why not? I would have that, that wow effect, isn't that right? There's admiration for the wise, but the treacherous, I think the King James said, the way of the transgression or the life of the transgression. There's admiration for the wise, but the trans, uh, the treacherous are on a path of ruin. Now, the reason why I'm going to back up, you know, in my church, every now and then I'll, I'll minister in an area, make a comment, and I will sense some resistance. And so, since I'm not, uh, you know, um, I'm going to use a very nice word, since I'm not very um, I don't care much. I don't cater to the spirit of that. I tend to back up and reinforce my position. And since I just picked it up a little bit, I love you, but I got to back up and reinforce what I just said. And the reason for that is you're the very one that God's trying to reach where this is concerned. Satan so done everything in his power to try to turn people off of the church, turn people off men of God, call them the crooks, call them manipulated, call them all kinds of things. But see, you're going to be the one outside of this place where God's trying to get you to come. you got to get back to where you honor God, honor his men, honor his church, his people. And I don't care what you want to point to to call people hypocrites and all that kind of nonsense. What about you? And when it's all said and done, it's going to come down to you and the personal way. And not what you want to point to someone else as a reason to justify why you didn't want to trust God. You better get yourself back in place. Amen. So watch this. He said, there's admiration for the wise, but the treacherous are on a path of ruin. Then it says, in all your ways, look at Proverbs 3. Now, not, uh, I'm going to have to go over to Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, since we're in Proverbs, thank you, Lord Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3. And then I'm going to read from verse 6. 
Now, this is interesting what's being said here. Are you out there? I'm going to give you a moment to comment. See if you're out there listening. Yeah, I think you are. Say something. Hit the comment. Say hallelujah or something. <laughs> Amen. But watch this. I mean, Proverbs chapter 3 and then uh, verse 5. It said, trust in the Lord completely. Don't rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, you rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. Leading you in every decision you make. Now watch the next the next verse. Um, now I'm going to read this from. I'm going to read that verse from the King James. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. Write these verses down. Go back over them. Uh, even after we're done with our podcast. But you notice it said in all your ways. What? In all your ways. This is a powerful phrase that represents, he's talking about all the essence of life or living. Anything that has to do with life, anything that, that requires his breath or his wind or his presence in it, you need to inquire. And when you think about it, that's anything. Anything, God, that's where Numa gets his word from, his wind, presence, breath of God. Nothing lives but they got God's breath in it. If you pull his word or his breath out of which basically the same thing, there'll be no life in it. If you take God's word out of it, there'll be no life in it. The thing will eventually manifest in the form of death. It's gonna die, man. You can't tell it right now, but it's dying, you know. <laughs> the thing's gonna eventually just die, die out. It won't amount to anything. It won't even leave legacy. It won't, it won't leave a mark, it won't do anything. It'd be as if you never existed because you wouldn't let the life of God in it. So here it says uh, in verse 6, in all your ways would acknowledge him. This is the this represents the very essence of life, of all that has to do with life or living. Isn't that awesome? He said, if you come to me about anything that has to do with living, I'll direct you. And when he directs you, He'll put you in a bad or and I know this is a word. I, I, I know this word for somebody right here. He said, if you come to me with all that has to do with your life, I'll cut a straight path for you. What we would normally say is he'll straighten things out for you. There are times when things have become a little chaotic and things get out of order. You don't know how to put things together. Of course you don't. Of course I don't. But he does. He said, if you'll come to me about this, he said. I will straighten things out for you. Man, how comforting is that? What does I'll, I'll straighten it out for you. Come to me, I'll straighten it out. And guys, that'll take the frustration out of your life. It'll take uncertainty out of your life. I mean, you see men of God getting in things. You said you saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You saw them getting in a situation that wasn't no fault of their own in that regard. But they were quick to tell their king, do what you want, king, but the God we serve. I'm going to paraphrase. He'll get us out of this. And he did, didn't he? And he will continue to get you out of things if you come to him. He said, but the, 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 the requirement here, the prerequisite is what come to God. Inquire. He'll get you, he'll get you out of it. He'll straighten things out for you. Somebody lied on me. God has straightened it out for you. Somebody, it doesn't matter. God will straighten things out for you. Somebody stole something from you. God will straighten things out for you. You see what he's saying? Come to me. Because it has to do with life and living. It says, I'm the author of life, and you're my offspring, but I'll straighten things out for you. Guys, that's powerful. I just, I just, when I think about this, how many things have I messed up that God straightened out? All because He always straightened out things that you come to Him about. Why is it still a mess? You hadn't gone to Him. Go to Him. Let Him fix this thing for you. He's the only one that can do it anyway. Let's go to one more episode, and then I'm going to get ready to stop now. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see about some of your comments here. See if you're listening out there. Yeah, you are. That's good. Um, I'm going to go to an episode, one of my favorite places in the scriptures, who referred to Luke chapter 5. In verse 5, this episode has to do with the, the businessman Peter at the time, who was in the fishing industry. And they were out there fishing on this lake and not getting results. In fact, they got to a place of toil, hard work, toiling, and for nothing. They came at the, at the dawning of the next day, they had no results from all their toil.
toil and hard work. Then Jesus walks up and he notices him out there. And uh, first thing he does is ask him for the usage of their boat so he can address the crowd that's pressing in on him and begin to teach and minister to them, of course. And so he got into Peter's boat. And when he finished, the Bible said when he finished his message or teaching, he asked them to push out from the land out to venture out into the deep venture out into the deep and get ready for a drought and what he's talking about that expression means to get ready to experience something you you didn't know could be experienced get ready to experience something you've never you've never seen in the history of this industry you see what's happening stop letting what people say they had never experienced well i've been doing this 20 years well you've probably been doing it wrong you're never listening to him so that's not your measuring stick or mine for how we're going to end up if we got involved with doing it. That's not your measuring stick. Don't identify what people don't do well and what they're failing at. That don't foster me. I'm not under the influence. So, and neither should you be. So watch this. Jesus said, all right, cast your nets. Come back. Wait a minute, let me say something. Peter replied, we just came back from fishing all night and didn't catch anything. What? Man, we are completely exhausted. We are at the point of complete exhaustion. This has been hard, just putting up our night, but we're not excited about going back somewhere where we already know there's nothing left there to be caught. And Jesus said, cast your net. You can almost say, let's go back and do it again. Now, this is what people have to be clear on when you're, when you're dealing with God. Doesn't matter how many times you attempted something and it didn't work. Doesn't mean God may not require you to go back and do it again. But the difference would be is this time you're under the influence of his word and his timing. His word and his timing. That's always important. So he said, no, we've been doing this all night. We're wore out, man. I mean, we're at the point of exhaustion. <laughs> Then he said, but if you insist, well, if you insist, we'll go out. Watch this, I'm paraphrasing. If you insist, we'll go back out there again. All right, we're going to go out again. And we're going to let down our nets again because of your word. We're going to do it because you said to do it. And you know what happened? They caught, some estimate, about a ton of fish. A ton, that's a bunch of fish. It's so much one boat can't handle it. In fact, he's calling for his partner, summoning his partners across the lake to come and help him. These boats are sinking because of the extraordinary result from acting on God's word when you'd rather not have to do again what you once did that didn't work before. But he didn't take, he's telling you to go now. And when he tells you, look at this, boat low, boat sinking effect. God, that's an awesome thing. And it said estimate over one ton. Now listen to this. They said that was the equivalent of two weeks of work. Two weeks, yeah. He did in just a few moments what would normally take two weeks to accomplish. But that's the kind of speed God is working at when we when we're when we're listening and obeying him. And watch out. There's no two weeks of wear and tear on them. That wear and tear of two weeks is not there. So you see this grace on you at the defense of your well-being and it's lessening the wear and tear in your life and it's making life enjoyable and a lot more, puts you a lot more at rest. He said, now if you follow me, I'll show you what real rest looks like. You'll be at home counting fish, get on the lake wondering where they are. You see what I'm saying? He said, a whole ton Oh my God, man, it's blessed so much, I gotta stop a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You better get this one. What I expect God to do, I don't care what hadn't worked before. One word from God can take a month or a year of wear and tear off of you. You can get a result, a 12-month result from a five-minute act of obedience that would take 12 months of wear or tear off of your life. That is a powerful thing. What? Yeah, I'm here preaching to you. Don't tell them what God is doing. 
because I'm working with him. I'm flowing with him. I'm enjoying this. I'm flowing with him. I expect to prosper. I expect to see the goodness of God in my life. And I don't expect to have a hard time about it. I expect rest in this thing. Amen. I'm believing God to enjoy this life and live this life that the Bible calls worth living in Proverbs 3. Now, um, I'm out of time. I, I've taken about 30 minutes or so, and I promised you I would. When I have guests, I'll take longer. We'll probably share um, uh, the, you know, the, the air time, and we'll probably end up going about, about an hour or so. But I wanted to take about 30 minutes or so and share this powerful word from the Lord. Because I know you need it. Don't ever take it lightly. Don't ever go to church where you just tell yourself, well, while I'm here and I've been to church, so that's good enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No, man. You come there to take on the, the Word of God, to, to embrace the impartation that God's going to put in your life. Because men that love God, gonna, or love, they're enjoying telling you about Him. And they'll tell you about life. And most of the time, they are sharing from the Word as well as their own personal experiences. If you've been around this for a minute, guys, you, you learn a few things. And you learn the importance of passing it on because God expects your life and mine to warrant a, a duplication. He wants you to learn about life so that you can uh, pass that information on to someone else's life. So He wants you to know things about Him. He wants you to know things about life. And when you know those things, you can pass them on. Amen. I pray this has been a blessing to you. I uh, uh, hope it wasn't in too big a hurry. Um, I tend to, to, you know, get a little excited that I want to just keep moving. I'm trying to learn the calls and acknowledge your comments and all of that. But uh, and and so I just want to uh, be a real blessing to you for the word of God is concerned. And I know this works. Uh, I'm enjoying and I'm looking forward to enjoying it in greater measures uh, as I continue to, you know, to, to go into uh, uh, the next phase or passion in my life and living. I'm excited about sharing that with you. I, I'm not completely clear on this, but I'm, the path is clearing up, right? You're seeing it. Um, you're seeing it as you go about living. You're seeing it as you continue to listen to God. You know, the Bible tells us to listen. How often? Day and night. What do you mean? It's sometime during the course of the day, pick up on God's voice. Sometime during the course of the night, when you get in in the evening, you start to rest. Pick up on His voice. Be listening. Um, a lot of times, you know how I knew what to speak to you today. I was, I, I was driving over to the uh, good studio here at the Bay Studios. Our beautiful studios. I wish I could show you more uh, about it. It's, it's, it's got several rooms in it. It's got um, uh, mic booths in it and. And sound booths, engineering rooms, and lounges, and dance play. I mean, it's really nice, really nice studio. And I'm, I'm so grateful that God has entrusted us with this this uh, uh, this facility. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing more from different positions in the studio. We go around different places and, and do a podcast here and do some of the work out in the studio. I'm excited about that opportunity. Meanwhile, think about what's been said. You have time in your life, man. You just need answers. And you need to be able to measure things. You need to be able to see, you know, days from now, weeks from now, months from now, even years from now, where you're no longer where you once were. Um, and I mean that not just financially, that too, not just uh, physically, but emotionally, spiritually. You want to be able to see where you're growing uh, spiritually in God. You're growing in relationships. You're learning how to get along with them, in spite of them. You're learning how to love the unlovable. Um, and things of that nature. So you want to be able to see where you're growing with God, going with God, going with God, hearing God. And then you get to share those testimonies with other people and encourage other people to get in the same path that you're in. So let me make sure that you understand that we do have some resources. I have some mini books that you can go online and, and order. And I encourage you to get those. They're little, 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 little quick page turners. And just don't buy them for yourself. Get four or five and pass them out to other people. And let them enjoy them as well. And also have this book called uh, The Silent Assess, and we're talking about the spirit of hopelessness and the importance of keeping this, this assassin at bay. First of all, recognizing him because his voice and his movement is so subtle, it's not easily detected at times, but it's so lethal. So it's important to stay with God so that you can recognize and detect which form 
to you, what's, what's uh, against you, and, and those kind of things. So this book will help you. I chronicle my own life. I share some of my own personal journey. So please get this book and buy, buy one or two and uh, hand them out to someone else. So I want to make sure that you understand that there, uh, there are some upcoming events going on at Numa uh, Christian Center. One of them, of course, is our, our WOW meeting. That's a big hat brunch that how women do. My wife used to be over this. Now my daughter is overseeing it. And some just some good women in the church, great women of God, were assisting her. And they're, they're doing an awesome job with this WOW. Women of wisdom of God, God's wisdom, of course. And um, you can call the church and get a lot more details. This is going to happen on May the 11th. I think it's the day before Mother's Day. Is that right? Mother's Day is on Sunday. This particular event, that's May the 12th. May the 11th, this brunch will take place at 10 a.m. I'm not sure about the location at this point. At the church? Uh, but you can call the church for, um, uh, for you know, for the uh, information. And the special guest this year is my... My sister in the Lord, <laughs> we're going to have Sister Carol Jones. She's a prayer warrior preaching machine, um, and she's from College Park, Georgia. She's a member of the World Changes uh, uh, Church, and we love Carol. I've had a, a relationship with her so many years, and you will be blessed. You don't want to miss that. So pass this on, ladies. And, um, and there are tables that are available, and they'll give you the pricing on that, and, um, and it will be an exciting time. You don't want to miss it. I do get out some and minister. I'm looking forward to more opportunities to minister. One of them, of course, will be uh, next Thursday. I'll be in Nashville preaching uh, uh, event. You can call the church and get some information about that as well. Um, also, and um, watch for us on different networks, TV. We're starting to spread out across the country and even different parts of the globe. Uh, some of our TV programs are, are reaching out uh, to places. So at some point, uh, pray about becoming a partner and sowing into this that we reach out into the lives of other people, changing their lives as well. Amen. Thank you for joining our special edition, a special edition of our podcast, Hope for Today, with yours truly, Dr. R.J. McCallum. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, 1030. Man, at Newman Church, we'd love to have you there. God bless you. See you later.